Everyone, welcome back to another Connoisseur's Conversation. Today I have a special one for you guys. Um, it's a new release, a 2023 release, just released in the past week. And this is a fragrance that I've put on my skin um, faithfully for the past three to four days to try to get a very um, intimate feel of how this fragrance comes across on my skin and how it can be presented in my wardrobe. This particular purchase was a blind buy, which I do not suggest many people do. Um, but all in all, I, like I said, am a fan of the Fragrance House Fragrance Dubois. And today, I want to present to you guys its brand new release commemorating its 10-year, decade-long Fragrance House. And this is Voyage a Paris. Um, if this sounds like the type of content you think you'll enjoy, pull up a seat, pour a glass, and of course, let's enhance. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to The Dry Down, the lifestyle channel where we as enthusiasts aspire to enhance and elevate our olfactive sensory experiences through the understanding of the different aromas, faucets, and nuances of scent, cigar, and wine. I'm your host, Chris. Welcome to today's experience. Today, we're going to dive right into, like I said, a brand new release from the House of Fragrance Dubois, and that release is its commemorative fragrance, Voyage à Paris. As I spoke to you guys the other day, um, these come in a velvet cough red with the velvet line uh, satin red embedded template and the flacone this is the actually 100 mil flacone different from the 50 mil but still the caps have the onyx uh, stones inside of them with the black plaques versus the gold plaques for the higher end line and this particular scent is one that I'm eager to dive right into. So let's spread blotter, get that first impression again. And what you get off this particular fragrance, and this to me, I'll give it this. Initial impression when I first sprayed this the first day of smelling it. It came in a, just a, as always we have a certain impression of what we want things to smell like. And it came in a bit underwhelming. It came in to me as something I had either smelled before or compared compared to something before, which I always hate. I want to give a fragrance. It's just due from the artistry of the perfumer, from the artistry of the house, and just uh, every fragrance deserves it's just due on the skin, it's just due on your wearing ability, and it's just doing its function. And so for me, in that first day, initial impression, I was like, dang, I smelled this before. And I smelled this before in two different fragrances, and I'll get that caveat out the way before I give you this full impression. If you are a fan of House Dubois, Orange Oud, or Orange Juan, I think Orange Juan or Orange June. I didn't purchase that fragrance, but I did smell it in a, a decant. Or Perfumes de Marley Carlisle with that Divana Patchouli Apple Mix. Or Gold Knight with the Honey Patchouli Mix from By Killian. More leaning toward the Orange Juan and the PDM Carlisle. You are in for a treat if you enjoy those particular scents. So what I get from this is a scent basically, in my impression, is a fragrance that if you want to be in the limelight, if you want to be looked upon um, handsomely, adored by the opposite sex, this is that particular scent for you. They, they categorize it themselves as a gourmand. I don't quite put it in that category. Gourmands to me lean just heavily sweet, foody. This is not a scent to me that comes off as a food or as a taste profile of food and food smells. It comes off to me very very authentically in a candied orange boozy effect in the opening which is just phenomenal and mouth-watering i will give it that if they want to say the gourmand s of this essence of this is the mouth-watering feel you get a mouth-watering feel upon spraying this on in that first five minutes because the orange blossom comes in along with a rum mix which gives you a nice touch of um almost a like I said, a candied orange, almost that, that, that taste and feel of pouring a fresh, I wouldn't say orange juice, not orange juice at all. Just can't like a candied orange, kind of like a sun-kissed drink, not particularly smell like a cheap sun-kissed flavored drink, but just think of that essence of that sweetened orange profile, like a candied orange profile that comes in with the Tagates, which is a similar profile inside of the blue uh, sapphire note when you open up in that particular scent. 
the opening is the one of the most mouth-watering parts of this particular scent. I enjoy that. I, and this is one of those fragrances as a gourmand. If you want to label that, I will say I enjoy this as a gourmand. But I don't particularly put it in that fashion. It comes off particularly nice in that opening. Then when you transfer to the mid, that's when you start to get all of the functions um, of a alluring sexual fragrance with it. Just the undertones of it come off very sweet, romantic, and alluring. You get a Divana note, which I... I'm a person that truly likes the way Divana smells. In every fragrance that I can think of that Divana is in, that I have in my collection, it's one that is in the top echelon of my fragrance purchases. From Ojuan to Parfums de Marley to now this Voyage of Parody. Um, there's few more in my collections I could think of. Um, Oud and Bourbon from the House of uh, Scent of Woods. All these have this Divana Accord. And it's a, it's a embedded a chord and note structure that's come off slightly green, slightly sweet, and like it's a almost not particularly citrus smelling woods, but more like a candied floral citrus esque plant. Almost you would think of as the orange blossom as well. So the vine and that orange blossom play very well in this particular scent together. They come together as a cohesive pair from top to mid, and that transition is a gorgeous one that you will enjoy, I promise you. Once it starts to get to the five minute mark, that's when it becomes a slightly more unisex fragrance for me. It starts to come in with a nice indolic jasmine, slightly on the push of Reflection Man where that nice sandalwoody, creamy jasmine comes in. And I think everyone will be appealed, uh, find some appeal in that particular part of this fragrance. To me, that is where the allure of the gentleman and the unisex appeal for a feminine skin can put this scent on. Very, very nice jasmine quarters in this particular scent. And then to me, after that point, which is maybe the 15 to 20 minute mark where the rum, the sweet rum and, and orange blossom come together along with the Divana honey and jasmine, you then mix with what I feel is a, a vanilla accord, more or less than a vanilla from a region. I can't play, I, and I'm not an expert on everybody's accords and things like that, but I do feel as though this vanilla is not just one particular vanilla. It feels like this is one um, that I, if I've smelled this particular vanilla accord, it's been in that new style where they have the CO2 extracts, which is a very, very authentic vanilla with a hint of the cakey sweetness to it. So if you come into a feel of that you'll get that from something like uh, Vanna Gloria or Baby Cat where that vanilla cord is, is enough of the vanilla pot and vanilla bean spice while also giving the the uh, confectionery feel to it. This is a scent that I think is going to be a hit for them. It's not going to be a hit in the aspect that everyone's going to like it or come to it and purchase it, but it will be a hit, especially this coming fall, because it's one of those scents, for one, it's a dynamic scent in the way it comes across as a scent for lovers, which is the one thing that Fragrance Dubois does very, very well. They put a very much so competing feel towards making sense for lovers. Unisex fragrance that each person in the relationship can wear, man, woman, woman, man, whoever you want to be with, each person in the relationship can wear these particular scents. And for me, you get that nice touch of vanilla in the base. Once you get into the depths of this fragrance, which is the three hour mark, you start to have a particularly robust base on your skin of honey divana, and oak and oud wood. That's when, for me, the fragrance could become, after some time of unfurling on your skin and transitioning, maybe the 15, 20, then to the mid of the 30s and 35 minutes mark, then you begin, you begin to get somewhat of a base note that I will admit, in the case of me liking the fragrance, I can become quite bored with the base of this fragrance. It's not something that jumps out at me as saying I have to have that base on my skin. It's nothing that elevates outside of something that I've already smelled before. The transition to getting to the base is one that I truly like. I want to smell that on my skin. So I have, in terms of putting this on my skin through the few days I've had it, I have refreshed my sprays because the mid and opening are just phenomenal to this particular scent. But like I said, the base is nothing to write home about. It's a typical oak, ooh, vanilla base that I think is enjoyable. Like I said, if someone hasn't been in this game or haven't smelled all these fragrances before, to them this will be particularly something higher in um, 
points, then I will put it. But I smelled this particular base before, and I will admit, like I said, I got a little bit bored with it. Now, all in all, I would give this fragrance a high mark from its transition and smell, and also the way it creates its um, its aura about you. It's a short term, short term um, projection on your skin. The first 20, 30 minutes it projects, then it calms down to a nice skin set, which you want in your sexual related fragrances, in your date night fragrances. You want something that'll push out maybe the first hour or so and get a whiff of it. Now, trust me, I may be anosmic to this, but for right now, my scent that I pick up in the air and when I sniff my arm and my hand in the testing of and wearing of this scent in a few days that I've had it, the projection was low, but I did get whiffs of sillage, and I will admit this as well. When I sprayed it on clothing at evening time or in the day before, and I put those clothes in my hamper, opening the hamper, I did smell the fragrance readily without any hesitation, and it, it came off um, as that base. So the base, like I said, can become boring, and I may be a little bit anosmic to that. And when I say boring, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying it's dull, I'm not saying it's something that you don't want to smell. I'm just saying to me, my experience has placed me in a pace where I've smelled the base before. So don't get me wrong when I say the base for me is boring because that's not putting the subject of this fragrance through the paces of saying this fragrance is boring to everyone. Just to me, I've smelled this a lot. So all in all, the scent Voyage à Paris, which is a 10 year, decade long exploration and journey for the house of uh, Fragrance Dubois, They've come out with a very decent scent. I will admit that I would have thought that this particular scent would have come off much more spectacular for someone just celebrating a decade long and giving the emphasis of celebrating a decade long. But they also emphasize the journey of Paris and the way this should smell like pastries and things like that. So the conjecture of putting that into play um, it's kind of an anomaly for me because I don't smell the pastry effect or it and I do not take this as one that I think that they could have explored a lot heavier into the creative side of it. But all in all, it's a great scent, a great scent that I would recommend to anyone to get a testing of, a trial flacon or a decant of and see how you like it because it's not one that I will not be wearing. Actually, I did get a compliment on it um, the first day I wore it. So, there's a, it has a compliment factor to it as well. So all in all, um, it lingers on the skin, but it left me longing for something uh, more spectacular in their 10 year anniversary. And for me, the way the composition lends itself masculine in the beginning then take itself to a unisex appeal in the heart is when I think will appeal and make this a community wide uh, fragrance for people to talk about. But it left a little something on the edge for me and I will admit that. So all in all, Fragrance Dubois came out with their 10 year anniversary fragrance for Voyage à Paris, a tribute to Paris because they make the four corner scents from Milan, America, or London, New York, um, which this fits right into as far as a soft yet um, lover's appeal encumbering the both sexes of the particular fragrance. And I think that will make it a hit um, as I repeat that statement because I think all in all it's a great scent, scent wise. 100 ml flacon, you can get it anywhere now. I ordered it from the actual um, Fragrance Dubois website and it came within two days. It got here Tuesday evening, Wednesday morning um, when I opened it and then started to explore it. So Divana Honey, Oud, a nice Oud Accord. Um, nothing like Sadra or nothing like um, Oud Noir, but more like Oud Blue Intense with the, the minimalist of the Oud Accord, more in the sweet tones of honey. Um, and I see that the honey and Divana is becoming really, really much so something that people want to explore in perfumery. And once someone perfects that, which this can be that, um, someone's going to hit that out the ballpark. So all in all, that is my video for you guys today. I hope as always you guys enjoyed this content. If you got anything educational or entertaining about the fragrance, Voyage à Paris from the House of Dubois. Tap in. Let me know how you guys feel about the House of Dubois. This is my second scent from them this week I talked about. Um, I hope you guys caught the video on Sadra Oud, which is my one of my top 10 fragrances of all time. Um, also, they did send, I will put that out there. This is a bonus content. They did send in a sample vial of Heritage. And this was my first time smelling Heritage. And my first impression on Heritage, I'll give you again, because I only sprayed it one time. Um, on skin and for me Heritage 
is it's a fragrance that is not for me. I will say that off the bat. Heritage is not a scent that leans anywhere masculine for me um, in any way, shape, or form. This is not a scent that I can pull off. This is a, it smells heavily aldehydic, heavily yellow and white floral, uh, heavily um, white creamy musk. Something in the realm of fragrances um, that you would smell from Chanel in the women's line. Something you would smell from maybe the other fragrance I could put in the frame of mind with that creamy, woody esque type of feel is Pick a Via Dama from the house of uh, Zerzhov. I could see where they want to compete and put this in. This could be, if they had a bit of a more oak moss and woody base to it, I could see this as a masculine scent because it has some of those components that you could see as vintage masculine. But to me, right now, Heritage from the House of Fragrance Dubai is not for me. It's a feminine leading scent, in my opinion, and it's not something that uh, goes with my personality. So, all in all, I will be passing this on. Um, I might give a, a giveaway of this. I'll put it in my links below if I um, prefer to give this away. But that's Heritage, a very expensive scent as well. That's like one of their, I believe, $800 fragrances. And it's not terrible, it's just extremely, extremely feminine to me. So all in all, once again with the bonus content, Heritage and Voyage à Paris. I hope you guys enjoyed this content. And if so, tap in below, let me know, leave a comment. Leave a like by hitting the thumbs up. Subscribe if you're watching this video and you haven't subscribed yet. Subscribe, it's just a free of charge type of service. I'm here to give this content to you and answer all your questions if you ever have any. If you want any type of consultations or quick answers, I'm always here for that as well. Just leave a comment below and I love getting back with you guys. And until next time, you guys have a blessed day and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.